Hi, I'm Mallory Martin. I'm here with FLAG, and we're here with Dr. Alex Kolker at the Lumcon facility in Coquitry. I have a bachelor's degree in biology from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and then after that I worked for a year, a little bit of time in the Everglades, and worked for a little bit of time in the National Institutes of Health. And then uh, from there I went off and got a master's and then a PhD at, uh, at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And my, my PhD was in marine and atmospheric sciences and I looked at sort of coastal geology and, uh, and coastal geochemistry. LUMCON, we are the Louisiana University Marine Consortium. We are, um, we are basically the research marine lab for the state of Louisiana and we serve all of the the universities in Louisiana. And we also have, um, in addition to doing re um, marine research here, and we've got people that do everything from from the biology of the coast to the chemistry of the coast. Our director has been very active in the, the dead zone. Um, like I said, my work revolves mostly around coastal wetlands. Other people here do fisheries. So we do a lot of research. Um, we also do education. We have programs for uh, Middle, every, pretty much we do everything from uh, actually from grade school to grad school. We have medical school students that come here, high school students that come here, college students that come here, even graduate students that will come here. So we do, we have a really wide range of educational missions here. Um, and we are located where we are for a couple of reasons. One, it's just a great place to do research. We can actually study the marine, sample the marine environment, and then bring it back to lab and study it. So people that do fisheries can go out and collect fish in the marine environment and bring them back and study them here. I can go out and sample the marshes and study them within you know just a few minutes of sampling them. Uh, we're also it's a great jumping off point for the uh, for research in the, the whole northern Gulf of Mexico. We are a uh, jumping off point for research in the, the northern Gulf of Mexico. We run a series of, of research vessels here. And uh, we've got the Pelican, which is like a 110-foot research vessel. And because of the proximity to the Gulf of Mexico, this is a great place for ships to, to jump off and to, to head out and out to sea. I don't, a lot of my research focuses on how people uh, and climate affect the coast. So what have been the sort of landscape changes that we've seen to the coast over the last hundred years and, and what's driving that both in terms of human change and uh, in terms of climate change. And then also what can we do to restore the coast and particularly in terms of moving moving sediments, so moving the mud in the Mississippi River Delta, how we can uh, restore the coast by, by moving mud around the delta. I think it's the, the land loss. You know, the state, of, the state of Louisiana has lost something like 2,000 square miles worth of land over the last century, which is equal to or greater than the state of Delaware. So we've just lost a tremendous amount of land here in South Louisiana, and we will continue to lose a lot of land if we don't do anything about it. So in my opinion, that's the greatest threat facing the coast and facing the, facing the state of Louisiana and the, one of the greatest threats facing our nation. How many of these problems were created from the Mississippi River diversion? So the the state of land loss here is complicated, uh, but let me try and break it down to you in, in sort of simple terms. The, Missi the, the Mississippi River Delta should naturally be in a state of growth and decay. It should be areas where the Mississippi River is entering its delta and its wetland it typically builds up, and areas that it's abandoned are typically decaying. And so this. So, and over time, the Mississippi River shifts course, um, and it shifts course between, um, yeah, it shifts course every, over time, roughly every 500 to 1,000 years. As, uh, as, and so we have a landscape that is naturally in a state of growth and decay. What's happened, though, is that we have accelerated the decay and we cut off the growth. Uh, they've cut off the growth by putting uh, channels and levees uh, all around the Mississippi River, so it no longer flows through its wet through its wetlands, and that does that uh, prevents sediment needed sediments and fresh water from entering the wetlands. So the wetlands have become saltier over time. Um, this area is also sinking; it's subsiding for some natural reasons because it's just na it's naturally very soft material. 
and it's uh, subsiding for artificial reasons. Uh, it's primarily because they've withdrawn a lot of fluid for groundwater and oil and gas as well. Uh, so, uh, and we, this subsidence is not being balanced by new sediment deposition because, uh, because the Mississippi River has been so heavily channelized. Now that's not the only cause of land loss here. There's also been uh, a lot of land that's been destroyed because canals have been cut in the marsh. Um, things like the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet, uh, the Mr. Go, uh, some of these other, the Barataria Canal, plenty of smaller canals that have been cut through these marshes. So uh, there's also been a lot of land loss due simply to canal construction and, and a few other factors, like I said, saltwater intrusion and, and some other ecological changes to the area as well. Okay, so most people are in favor of coastal restoration in general, but there are some things that complicate it. If we divert the flow of the Mississippi River, we're going to be changing the ecology of that area, right? So people that maybe are um, oyst that that you know oystermen, there are if we divert the flow of the river through uh, through oyster habitat, we're going to adversely affect those um, those oystermen. Now we might. In the, uh, because the oysters don't like river water. They don't like the sediments. They don't like the water to be too fresh. They don't like the sediment that's coming down the river. So diverting the flow of the river will be, in the short term, bad for, let's say, some oystermen. Um, we might also bring in too many nutrients from the Mississippi River that could change the plant ecology of the area. Now, in my opinion, those are going to be balanced out by the fact that we're building uh, a broader coast, but there are some people that will you know, experience changes to their lifestyle if we divert the flow of the Mississippi River. Likewise, if we divert the flow of the Mississippi River, we are going to um, slow down the Mississippi River, and that's going to cause more sediment to fall out of the river's mouth, and that's going to make shipping costs more expensive because the ships will have to clean out those areas. Basically, we're going to create sandbars at the river's mouth, and we're going to have to clean up those sandbars somehow, and that's going to be expensive. So we have to be concerned about uh, the shipping interests as well when we divert the flow of the river. So there are people whose lives are going to be made more uncomfortable through some of these coastal restoration activities. I think in the long term, it'll be good for the coast, but we still need to think about how do we deal with the people whose lives are made more uncomfortable by some of these changes. Hurricanes, again, um, hurricanes are part of the natural system in South Louisiana, right? And like I said, the coast is in naturally a state of growth and decay. Um, the problem with hurricanes is not that they occur. They, they're natural. They can, they're a powerful agent of change around here. They can bring a lot of material into the wetlands and cause them, the wetlands to grow vertically. They can also erode the coast and cause, cause these areas, cause coastal erosion. The problem with hurricanes is that as the coast has become more vulnerable and more fragile, hurricanes can do um, more destruct have more destructive impacts, and their let's say some of their beneficial impacts are minimized because the coast has been so heavily altered. Okay, so at Long Con, what exactly is like an average day at work for you? It really it really varies here. Um, some days I uh, often I, I come in. I'll, uh, I'll try and see what's happening with the, with the people that are working in the lab, see, uh, make sure that everything in the lab is working properly, um, that everyone knows what they're doing in lab. I will uh, do a little bit of writing here. I try and write uh, papers and the like talk, they talk about the coast and coastal change. Um, I, uh, let's see, so those are the days when I'm, I'm here at Lumcon. I'm either in my office or I'm in the lab. Uh, but I'm not here at Lumcon all the time. Sometimes I'm out in the field. And so we go out and we'll, we'll take, we have a series of boats here. And so we typically take out some of the small boats, things that are 20 feet long, and we'll, we'll go out in the marsh and we'll sample the marsh. And a lot of the work that we do involves the sediment here. So we take, we take core samples. So we take long tubes of uh, basically a big long pipe and we'll push, push that into the marsh and we'll pull out uh, a section of the marsh and try and reconstruct the history of the marsh. Uh, using um, using using various various chemical or or other sedimentological tools. So a lot of times we're out in the wetlands uh, sampling the wetlands when we uh, you know, when we're here at Lumpkin.
the solution is to let the Mississippi River flow something close to its natural course. The idea is, well, you remember I told you earlier that this area builds up, that the delta builds up when you have river water naturally uh, entering an area, and the river water brings in sediment and causes the land to build up. Uh, the idea is to mimic those natural processes. So to cut small holes in the levees and do it you know, strategically and let the river flow back through its wetland. And that's the, the best hope at, 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 uh, at restoring the coast, to partially divert the flow of the Mississippi River, to allow river water to re-enter the wetland, and basically to allow the natural land building processes to take over. I've been a little more active. Um, I was already busy before the spill, and uh, I've got a few projects going on that are post-spill, um, looking at, uh, I was out with some folks from Texas A&M and, and LSU, and we were looking at how the spill affected sort of the chemistry of the water around the marshes. I'll be out tomorrow with some folks from Tulane and Los Alamos National Lab looking at how it's going to be affecting the, the spill has affected the, the genetics of the bacteria that live out in the coastal marshes. We've been looking at the impacts of the spill on some mangrove sites out in, um, out in Bear's Area Bay. So I've, I've added on a few more projects since the, uh, since the spill. Thank you so much for meeting with us Well, it was today. a pleasure to meet with you. Thanks so much for stopping by.